So a student asked me to solve this problem, and uh, let me just read it to you. We have a long, solid rod that has uniform internal heat generation Q dot, and that will be in watts per meter cubed, SI units, for that heat generation. And the outside temperature of the rod is a fixed value of TS. So the rod would um, have the radius extending from zero to either cap R or R naught or cap R naught, something like that, the outer radius. And uh, at the temperature at R equal to cap R naught is a fixed temperature TS. Okay, so let's make a sketch. Here is um, the rod. Let me try and draw it like this. And what do we have? running down the middle of it right there is the center line goes right down the middle goes out and so the center line and so if we just take a slice we'd look at it like this and we would have the coordinate system R going from 0 to cap R naught the outer radius and again right here is the center line if I sketch the temperature distribution and maybe I use this y-axis for the temperature and maybe this is the numeric value I don't know 40 degrees C or something like that for the surface temperature we could put that dot right there saying it R naught the surface temperature is TS and what would, would you expect the temperature profile to look like well we'd probably have a maximum right there in the at the at the middle in the center and if you took and did the slope right there it would be flat I mean it's symmetric uh, it's it, as you spin it around thinking about going around in a circle this way you can't have it anything but the slope be uh, zero there so let me try and clean that up a little bit put the temperature going a little higher like that and the temperature profile has two boundary conditions. So to solve this problem, we're going to need our heat equation. And so our heat diffusion equation, which is statement of the conservation of energy, we've derived it. So in cylindrical coordinates, you have just 1 over R, the derivative, ordinary derivative with respect to the variable R of R times dt dr and we have a negative Q dot divided by K so that's our volumetric heat source and thermal conductivity now I'm not going to rederive that equation that's where we're starting and uh, we also have two boundary conditions let's call this boundary condition number one and I'm going to say DT DR so the slope at R equal to zero at the center line is zero the one we just talked about right here and then the next boundary condition boundary condition number two is that T at R equal to cap R naught is equal to a known value TS okay well at this point you just have to go back and review your math class your differential equations class because this is a classic problem so the first step I would say I'm just going to draw it like this. We take our diff governing differential equation and we want to separate it. That's how I learned it. That's how I explain it. So a process of separate and integrate. Sometimes you can't separate and integrate to solve a particular PDE or ODE. You have to use a different strategy. Uh, but let's just do the separate. Okay. So you would have multiply both sides by R and you get, well, R times dr so uh, if you multiply both sides of this equation by r times dr what you're left with is just the d the difference or r dt dr equal to minus q dot divided by k r dr hopefully that step makes sense at this point you take the second first you separate now you integrate so we just integrate both sides. Now, this may seem very confusing to a student, but if I said, look it, uh, I have dx and I want to integrate 1 times dx, the student would quickly say, well, ah, man, that wasn't on my final exam in calculus, but this is really easy. You would just say x. Okay, let me have a harder one. Integrate x dx. What's that? Uh, 1 half x squared? 
yeah, you're right. And then you just keep going on. Well, look at this. So you have the interval of D something. We call it Y. 1 times the integral, uh, you know, the integral of 1 times dy. What would that be? Y. So, so just don't let this fool you. It looks a little complicated in there. But when I integrate on that right-hand side or left-hand side, we get R dt dr. Okay, let's take a look over here. Well, we have the minus q dot over k that comes outside. We have the integral of r dr. Well, that's going to pick up the one half r squared. And constant of integration. So I'm not teaching math. I'm not teaching how to solve um, ODEs and PDEs and integrate and all that. I'm, I'm just using it. Uh, those topics are covered in prerequisite classes. And again, I encourage you to go back and review your engineering analysis or math classes that, that you had to have to get this far. Okay. Now at this point, I look and probably, because this boundary condition is on the derivative, I can probably determine that constant C1. So let's go ahead and, um, well, let me take one more step. And, and that's fine. Just do it right here. So if I apply the boundary condition uh, number one, I get, first of all, at r equal to zero, at zero, then times the derivative dt dr at zero. That's zero. Okay, so the left-hand side is zero. We have minus q dot divided by 2k, and then r is zero, or r is zero squared, and then we have c1. Well, guess what c1 is? We conclude c1 is zero, so you can just delete that. And so we've used the first boundary condition. At this point, we want to take our uh, equation, and we want to separate. How would I do that? Multiply both sides by um, dr divided by r. So what you're left with is dt is equal to minus q dot divided by 2k. Now I'm multiplying by dr over r, and so one of those r's cancel, and that's what we're left with. Hopefully you follow that step going from here down to there. And now you finish separating, you integrate. Um, there you go. So we integrate both sides. I think I have enough room, hopefully I do, to fit it up in here. Okay, so now if I fit it up here, I have t is equal to minus q dot. I'm going to have uh, 1 over the, um, the 2 times the 2, so I pick up a 4 times k r squared plus a new constant. I'll call it the c2. It's another constant of integration. Well, I think I did that right. So now we apply a boundary condition number one. No, boundary condition number two. Apply boundary condition number two. And what do we pick up? We pick up that um, TS is equal to negative Q dot divided by 4K at the cap R naught squared plus C2. Okay, so we pick up that C2 is equal to TS plus Q dot R naught squared divided by 4K. We can substitute into the final expression for the temperature distribution so that we have T as a function of R is going to be equal to, I'll put it like this, TS I'm going to run out of room, but uh, let me just have to wrap it around. Uh, plus Q dot R naught squared divided by 4K, 4K there. And then we multiply by, and this is where I have to wrap it around, 1 minus R over cap R naught squared close parent. So that fits up in there. Okay, now that I have an analytic expression, I can say, well, where is going to be my maximum temperature? Well, we already know where the maximum temperature, look at the plot, our profile. It's going to be at, at R equal to zero. So T max 
is at t of 0. And so we find t max to be the surface temperature plus q dot r naught squared divided by 4k. Well, sorry I had to squeeze it in so tight at the bottom, but that's what we set out to do is to analytically derive the temperature profile and then use it to calculate the maximum temperature in that rod where you have a volumetric heat source and a known conductivity and a fixed surface temperature. So we're done. Thank you.